we're going to talk about one of the signs of the hour that took place at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Chapter 54, verse number 1. Allah Azza wa Jal. This chapter is, or surah, is called the surah of the moon, Al-Qamar. Allah says in the Quran, اِقْتَرَبَتِ السَّاعَةِ وَانْشَقَّ Qamar. Allah says, the hour has drawn nearer and the moon has been cliffed asunder. The moon has been cliffed asunder. It has been split into two parts. Now, in the Sahih of Imam Muslim, narrated by Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, and also in the Sunan, narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, that the pagans of Mecca demanded a miracle. They wanted a sign to prove that the Prophet ﷺ is the Messenger of Allah. In the hadith of Muslim, Allah Azza wa Jal made the moon to split into two parts. And the Prophet was talking to the pagans and to the Muslims as well. Testify, look and testify, bear witness on what is happening. In some narrations, the kuffar, they were the pagans, they were the one who demanded that the Prophet would split the moon and it was full moon at that night and when Allah gave that miracle the idol worshippers the pagans said that well this is sorcery this is magic he uh, uh, did something to make us think that we're seeing the moon to be split and he's a sorcerer so this is not new for him and we as Muslims believe that this had taken place at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Now I know that there are, the non-Muslims would say, this is not acceptable. How can the moon be split into two? Even some of the so-called, quote unquote, Muslims may also object to that and saying that this is not possible. And this shows you the amount of ignorance. Isn't Allah Azza wa Jal the one who created the heavens and the earth? We live on this planet called Earth and in this solar system. And we have millions of similar solar systems in the uh, Milky Way, the galaxy. And there are millions of other galaxies. Do you think it would be difficult for Allah Azza wa Jal to split the moon into two halves as a miracle? Now, one would argue and say, yes, but this is not scientific, this is so and this is so. Dr. Zaghlul Najjar on his website, and I asked him once this personally, and I told him, is there any scientific evidence to prove this he told me that he and it's on his website that while he was giving a lecture in Cardiff in the UK and a person asked him about the splitting of the moon and he said is this scientific and the doctor said Dr. Zahlul said no this is not scientific because science cannot prove it this is a miracle had it not been for the Qur'an and for the authentic sunnah, so I'm a Muslim, no one can doubt this. We would not have believed it. But because the Qur'an and the authentic sunnah proves it, prove it, we believe it and embrace it as Muslims. And we don't need any science to prove that for us. He told in his website that a man stood by the name of, if I recall correctly, David Moses uh, uh, Pitcock. Dawood, he's a, a Muslim, a revered Muslim, and at the time, I think he was the head of the Islamic party in the parliament or somewhere, I don't know. And he wanted to comment, and he said that years ago, when he was a Christian, a student gave him a copy of the Holy Quran, and the first page he opened was chapter 54 that spoke about the, the moon being uh, uh, cliffed asunder. And he immediately closed the book and said that this is not logical, I'm not going to continue to read this until years later he saw an interview on the BBC or some other channel in the UK 
and he saw the interviewer speaking with three scientists from NASA and he was bombarding them with criticism how do you dare spare, uh, spend so much money with all this poverty hunger famine all over the world spend so much money on exploring things that have no value to you and they were talking to him and they said that we've spent a hundred billion dollars just to set a man to uh, a foot set a, a man's foot on the moon and the interview was outraged and then they told him about the things that they've discovered that no way they would have believed that and what they had discovered was that after studying the geology of the moon they've discovered that it was actually there was a crack from top to bottom going right through the center of the moon which meant that it was split and they could tell by uh, 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 the surface of that crack that went through the core and that was from all over from the top to the bottom of the moon and when they studied the only justification scientific justification was that it was split into two parts and then it was sealed back again so David Pitcock when he heard this he went back to the Quran he studied it and he embraced Islam because he said that 14 centuries ago no way the Prophet would have known something like that to be the first ayah in, in, a, in a chapter of the Quran that the moon was split that the moon was cleft asunder so this is something from the contemporary you can refer to Dr. Zaghloul Najjar he always appears on uh, Huda TV and other Islamic channels he is known to uh, uh, explore the science, science in the Quran and the Sunnah and not only that I know that disbelievers with weak knowledge about Islam with zero knowledge of the power of Allah Azza wa Jal would keep on ridiculing this or thinking that this is not logical one of the scholars of Islam though he was an Ash'ari yet he had a lot of things that were positive in his work and he was known to be one of the smart uh, and intellectual Muslim scholars his name was Abu Bakr al-Baqillani and he was requested by the caliph at the time it was approximately in the fourth century to go to uh, Constantinople and to meet the Byzantian Caesar there because he requested some uh, uh, information and uh, uh, to be uh, sent an ambassador so that they can communicate and it was almost a time of truce at the time so Abu Bakr being a, a, a knowledgeable scholar of Islam went in and there are a lot of things that took place that were so funny but so informative and it shows you the dignity and honor of the scholars of Islam at that time nowadays unfortunately not all of them have this because some of them had sold their religion some of them had humiliated themselves through asking people for money and for uh, uh, pity cash but real scholars alhamdulillah they exist today there are lots of them but I'm talking about the unfortunate status of scholars nowadays when the governments the Islamic governments are not supporting them are not giving them enough to sustain an honorable life instead they have to work and maybe they have to humiliate themselves anyhow Abu Bakr was a judge al-Baqillani so when he went to visit the uh, uh, Byzantium Caesar they told him that you have to take your shoes off and you have to wear special kind of slippers and you have to take a turbans and wear very light uh, uh, cloth on your head because these are the customs and he said no I'm a scholar you accept me as I am and I will come you don't I'll go back to my country under this sort of pride the uh, 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 the king or the Caesar allowed him to come the custom was that everyone who comes he used to he must have uh, to, uh, bow in front of the king but they knew that he was a Muslim and Muslims never bow in Islam it's shirk it's associating others with Allah to bow so that is why even in karate Muslims don't bow it is forbidden completely to bow to prostrate 
So the king said that make a trick so, so that he must bow without ordering him to do so. So they made a very small door with a low uh, uh, ceiling so that if he wanted to enter, he would have to do this and enter bowing and then raise his head up. And the, and the king would take this as bowing. The judge, Al-Baqillani, when he came and saw this, he figured it out. And he went in backwards. So he gave his back and went in kneeling to the opposite side. So he gave his back end, rear end, to the Byzantium Caesar. And he went in this fashion. And the king immediately knew, knew that this one was a tough cookie. He was a tough cookie to uh, uh, play around with. Then he asked him about so many things, but what I wanted to ask here was, or mention here was, he asked him about the splitting of the moon. And he said, in your book, it is stated that the moon was split. How is that? He said, yes, this is in the Quran and the Sunnah. He said, how did it happen when no one on earth reported it except you Arabs? And the Muslims, he said, because people were not watching, were not anticipating. He said, yeah, but this is not acceptable to us. So the judge, Al-Baqillani, said, tell me about the table, the repast that descended to Jesus and his apostles. We have it, we, are, we have it mentioned in our Quran, but did everyone see it? And the king said, yes. He said, the Jews did not see it and they falsify it. The Hindus, the fire worshippers, all denomination all over the world, none of them reported it. So can you say that it, this is also a lie? And the Caesar was wordless. He didn't know what to say. And there are so many things of that beautiful journey of this judge, Muslim judge to that Caesar that shows you the intellect. For example, they gave a party a dinner party and they invited him and this was only in a, in a less than a week time because they dismissed him and sent him with lots of gifts back to his home country because they told him if you keep this man here he's going to affect all the Christians and they're gonna reject their faith he, he has so much proof and logic that we cannot argue with him one of the things that he did is the Caesar brought his Patriarch, I think it's called, is the head of the Orthodox Church. And he told him, listen, this is a Muslim judge. He's smart. He's witty. Be careful. Try to be firm in your religion so that he would make a mistake. And then we would hold one against him. So the guy said, OK. And they gathered all the priests, all the monks, all the scholars in Christianity. And he made a big feast. And when the judge came, everybody was there in silence he entered and the caesar was introducing him to the patriarch and he said that this is the head of the christian church and the judge went and smiled and said how are you how's the wife how's the children how's the family and everybody was in a very pale and straight face and he said well, what's wrong with you and the caesar said i thought that you were a, you were a man of knowledge don't you know that the patriarchs and, and, the, and, and the priests don't get married and don't have wives and don't have children? He said, Subhanallah, you claim that Allah Azza wa Jal had a wife and he had a son. And this beautiful thing, you're depriving your priests and monks to have? What kind of a religion is this? And they were baffled and they were shocked because this is simple logic. They ask him a question, and this is beside the topic. I'm going to go back to the topic in a, in a minute, but his, his biography is astonishing. They asked him wanting to, in a sense, poke our religion and make fun out of it. So they said, tell me about the wife of your prophet who was accused of adultery. And immediately on the spot, Abu Bakr al-Baqillani knew that he was referring to Aisha whom the hypocrites slandered her and Allah Azza wa Jal revealed a whole surah, Surah An-Nur, clarifying that she is innocent and pure. 
Now, if he's going to tell him about that this was the hypocrite saying and this was that, or like the Shia do when they slander Mother Aisha, because they are alike, Shias and those who slander Mother Aisha, they are like the Christians. They're kafir to us. So, instead of explaining and making a long story short, he answered in two sentences or few words. He said, this is something that the wife of the Prophet ﷺ was accused of and there were no evidences and she was cleared by Allah. And also Allah Azza wa Jal told us about another woman who was accused of the same thing, but she came with a baby. He was referring to Mary, the mother of Jesus. And everyone was again speechless. Aisha was accused. Now, if we don't believe in the Quran, if we don't believe in the Sunnah, a woman was accused, there are no evidences, no witnesses, she's cleared. She did not fornicate, she did not commit adultery. Also with Mary, peace be upon her, and peace be upon her son, Jesus Christ. If we did not believe in the Quran, nor in the Sunnah, and the Jews accused her of committing fornication, the evidence is that she's carrying a son, and he does not have a father. But because we're Muslims, because we believe in the Quran, and we believe in the honesty and purity of Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and we believe in his miraculous birth, we do not say this. But those who do not believe were speechless. They didn't have anything to comment because this is history and this is what you also uh, agree and approve of. Anyhow, the splitting of the moon is a fact. There's no doubt in it, none whatsoever to us Muslims. Non-Muslims, go ahead and research, do your geological studies. It does not matter to us because we believe in the Quran and the Sunnah. We believe in the unseen. However, some scholars do not consider the splitting of the moon to be a sign of the hour. Why is that? They said because there was nothing in the Quran nor in the Sunnah that says that the splitting of the moon is a sign of the hour. All what the, there is, is that Allah Azza wa Jalla said the hour has drawn nearer and the moon has been split, has been uh, 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 cliffed asunder. So there isn't anything that states that it is a sign of the day of judgment. And this is true. However, I mentioned it because Sheikh Umar Suleiman Ashkar, may Allah uh, uh, protect him and preserve him, who wrote a number of beautiful books. I think they are translated by Darus Salam. And this book is known as the signs of the minor day of judgment, which is the signs of uh, 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 the hour. And there are the signs of the day of judgment, which is a different topic altogether and what will happen in this universe. And this is a different topic. Sheikh Dr. Suleiman, uh, uh, Umar Suleiman Ashkar mentioned this in his book. However, four years before he published his book, Dr. Yusuf Al-Wabil, uh, wrote a thesis for his masters in the Islam in, in the University of Imam Muhammad bin Saud about the same topic and he did not mention it because as I've stated it there is no relation between it and the and the signs of the hour it is a miracle and there is no doubt about it but it is not considered to be part or, or, or one of the signs of the hour have you ever wished that there was a Muslim version of YouTube or Netflix? Well, we have created one. The One Islam TV app has no adverts and is safe to browse for your peace of mind. Watch hundreds of high quality produced Islamic reminders, Quran videos, stories of the prophets, hot topic, debates, and so much more. Four to eight new videos are uploaded daily, inshallah. You can watch or listen to videos while your device is switched off. Watch videos on demand or download videos and watch offline. One Islam TV is 100% run and owned by Muslims, which means the small amount you pay for your subscription is a sadaqah jariya, continuous charity for you, as we use the funds raised to continue producing more beneficial videos and reminders, inshallah. The One Islam TV app is now available on Apple devices, Apple TV, Android devices. Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku. So you can watch on most devices and smart TVs.
Download now for a free 7-day trial. May Allah reward you for supporting our work. Mm hmm.